Good afternoon, viewers. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'll be starting in just two minutes. I'll be starting in two minutes. Please get closer, get your test closer to you now so that I can do the correction. Get your test closer to you. I can do the correction. Thank you for coming on board. Thank you for coming on board. Thank you for coming on board. I'm connecting it also to the Facebook. We have it Facebook. So people can view us through Facebook also. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, viewers. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, today I'm going to run the, the correction of the test we did in the class. So uh, this is a likely question in the exam which you have to concentrate very well and see how you'll be able to solve them one-on-one. -on -one. Remember that when you go to exam, you have 30 questions and you must pass at least 27, which means you can't fail more than three. And we are trying all our possible best to see those likely questions in the exam and how we can treat them. I have one question here, which is which I'm going to treat today. Quest 30 questions, and I'm going to run all of them. And I'm going to explain why the answer is like that and, and for the viewers to understand how the questions go. And I might be able to show some pictures also and describe how it will go. Now, uh, here I have question one. If you look at, uh, if you look at this picture here, if you look at this picture here, this picture, this picture here is a mop, a mop stump. And I said, what is the maximum speed a micro car can travel at outside a built up area, a micro car? A micro car in this area, what they are trying to tell us is outside of town, outside a town, a micro car is still a mop. So what is the maximum speed of a mop? is 45 kilometers per hour, 45 kilometers per hour. So it's just a trick to tell you that outside of town or micro means smaller car. Smaller car means more. 
is another English word of calling mop, a scooter. You know, we have mop of two wheel, we have mop of three wheels, we have mop of four wheels. A mop of four wheels means a light quadricycle. Good. Good. Number two, second question. At a subric checkpoint, a police officer allowed to submit driver to a test to detect the presence of drugs? To detect the presence of drugs? It's yes. The police has right. At any checking point, they have right to stop you and ask you to carry out an alcohol test or a drug test. It is their right. It is their, they have priority to stop you when they notice anything or when they are doing any control day, a control activities on the highway. So they have right to stop you as a driver, as a user of the roadway. Even a pedestrian can be stopped when you are involved in an accident. So that is why it's yes in that case. Number three. Number three says, does everybody react the same to the pharmaceutical treatments? Does anybody, does everybody react the same? You have to understand this place very well that everybody does not react the same. It's no. You can't react the same because the way I will react, I will respond to a drug will be different from the way somebody else would do. So it means that because individual circumstances such as fatigue or not having things in your stomach can vary the effect, which is the best answer here, suitable answer here, which is C. So it can vary the effect. Somebody who has not eaten for long and just took a drug, medication can overreact in that person's body. So what you need to understand in that case is that it's no, it varies differently in people's body. Number four, when a police officer gives a long whistle, is ordering a driver to a long whistle. A long whistle of police is po long whistle. Remember that we have two type of tune of the whistle of police. We have the long whistle and we have the short but frequent. In this case, when we have the long whistle here, it's telling you to continue driving. Continue driving. It's just like in football. When the referee blow a whistle, like pour the match is starting. When the referee blow a whistle like short but frequent, pour, 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 means the match is ending. So likewise, the police, in a time, just have it in mind that when a, a long whistle comes up, it means that continue going. But when it's short but frequent, pour, pour, pour means stop. Number five. If you use a mobile phone while when you are driving, the risk of having accidents is dash, dash, dash. The risk of having accidents in this area, in this case, the risk of having accidents, sorry, the risk of having accidents here will be greater than if you don't use one. So when you use, when you use uh, the, the, the phone, mobile phone while driving, your risk of having an accident will be high. Will be somehow so will be more. So because that the 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 mobile phone cause distraction so much, you get distracted when you are when you are using a mobile phone. You get distracted. You get distracted when you are using a mobile phone. So you have to understand that using a mobile phone will cause you a lot of distraction. And this, in this case. It will be greater. Your distraction will be greater, according to the question number five in this case. Question number five in this case. It will cause you distraction. Distraction. Number six. Question number six. In the event of an accident, in the event of an accident, must you stop to help? Must you stop to help? When they say, must you stop to help? Yes. If there's no help rendered. But if... They are carrying out help already or help first aid on ground. You have to continue going. You don't have to. You don't have to render help so that you will not cause a distraction. So in that case, the answer here will be yes, which is the B. Yes, when help is required and no, 
traffic officers are present. So that is it. When no traffic officers are present to help, you can carry out your help. Number seven, an emergency vehicle on emergency service permitted to use their flashing light only. Emergency vehicle, that is, that is the priority vehicle. You know, they have two ways of expressing their intention on the roadway. They can use their siren and they can use their flashing lights. They can use either of the two. It's permitted. And when they, they, and this question is asking you, can they use only lights in this place? Can they use only lights? It's, 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 it's yes. Yes. When it does not represent any danger to other roads, which is the hay. When it does not represent any danger, it does not cause danger to other people. That is why you see most time at night, they go with their lights. But when they get to a junction where they don't have visibility, they blow the siren so that the junction, it will call attention of other users from the junction. Number eight, under the effect of alcohol, the stopping distance dash, dash, dash. Stopping distance dash, dash, dash. It increases because under the influence of alcohol, when you brake, it will take you more time before the vehicle stops because you are not reacting fine. Your reaction time is longer. It's increasing. So it automatically, the braking distance and stopping distance will also increase. And remember, when braking distance and stopping distance increases, it means that it's not good. It's a danger. Number nine. Which seats can a minor who is taller than 1.5 meter occupy in the private car? It can go for any seats. It can go for any seats, both the front and the rear. It can go for any seats. There's no problem about that. Number nine, which is B, can go for any seats in that area. Well, just remember that when that minor is less than 135, he has to use the seat restraint system. But when he's in between 135 centimeter to 150, he might use seat, seat belt or the seat train system. But when he's above 150, he needs to use the seat belt direct. Number 10, what does this sign mean? If you look at the sign, the sign I'm going to, the sign I'm going to show here now. I'm going to try to show the sign, the picture so that we can get it clear. Look at the sign. What does this sign mean? Remember that red triangle means danger. The picture you're seeing is wildlife animal. So in that case, danger due to frequent crossing of wild animals. Frequent crossing of wild animals. That is that is that we could number 11 of that same of that test. Number 11 says. If the private car wants to turn left, it must. If a private car wants to turn left, if the private car wants to turn left, look at the picture which they are talking about here because it has to look at the picture. If this private car wants to turn left, good. If the private car wants to turn left, turn left from its lane without invading the on coming vehicle lane. Why? Because that lane is going and coming. One lane going, one lane coming. So you have to do that from your own lane. You have to do that from your... How did I know that is one lane going, one lane coming? Because the sign is... The sign on the side is facing me with maximum speed. And in this case, we should understand that the, 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 the lane is trying to tell us what it takes that is just two direction flow of traffic. Number 12, number 12. Number 12 says, if you drive while you are tired, dash, dash, dash. The answer here will be, your reaction time will increase. You are tired, you are under fatigue. Remember that you will not react fine. Your reaction time will increase. 
it will take you time. But when it takes you time to, to, to react, that means you have an increasement in your reaction time. So automatically, you are not going to have, you're getting closer to the obstacle and it's dangerous. Number 13, reaction distance is dash, dash, dash. Just like asking you, what is reaction distance? What is reaction distance? Remember, reaction. Reaction. That is the distance you cover during from the time you react. When did you react? From the time you start to press brake onto the car stop. So the right answer here will be A, which says the distance that the vehicle travel during the reaction time. Sorry, we are, we are talking about reaction, reaction distance. So reaction distance is the distance you cover during the reaction time. During that reaction time, there's a distance you cover. So that distance is the reaction distance. So what is that reaction time? The time that passes when I perceive, when I receive a stimulus and I react to it. You did not press brake. You only intend to press brake. You react by removing your leg from the tattoo to put it on top of brake. So in that case, you are reacting. Now, uh, the distance you cover during that reaction time, the car is still moving. There's a distance you cover. That distance during reaction time is called the reaction distance. It's different from braking distance. Braking distance is from the moment you start to press brake, you are braking for the vehicle to stop. Stopping distance is the braking distance plus reaction distance. Number 14, on this interurban road, it is mandatory to use the deep beam headlights. Look at interurban road, this interurban road. They're giving us a picture of an interurban road. Look at this picture, interurban road. This kind of road is like conventional road because it has no symbol of motorway, dual carriageway, and highway for automobile. So it's a conventional road. So in this case, they said, the answer, the right answer will be, when there's a danger of dazzling others, on it, it is mandatory for you to use the deep beam light because the deep beam light, they believe that it's not dazzling. It doesn't dazzle when it's well adjusted. But when it, when it, has, a, when it, has, a, when it has an improper adjustment, it dazzles so much. It does it so much. Good. Good. Oh, number 15 of the question says, are you permitted to use cornering lights in your vehicle? Cornering lights. In this place, cornering light is like you are honing the light to show to someone who is coming out from the corner that a vehicle wants to enter the corner. So when you are negotiating a bend, a bend in this case, they just twist the English. When you are negotiating a bend, you have to understand that negotiating a bend, you need to show, you need to signal your presence so that the vehicle who is coming from the bend will be able to know that you are coming in. You know, sometimes daytime, when you're negotiating a bend, you have to like press horn for people to know, or you flash lights. But during this reduced visibility, you need to put on your light on. So that is, the answer will be yes. Yes, you must put on light. Number 16 of this same test. Do traffic accidents affect the environment? Do traffic accidents affect the environment? Yes, it affects. Accidents affect the environment because it reduces population sometimes. It causes problems to the surroundings when it happens. So it affects the environment. Number 17. Number 17 says, when you are driving in thick fog, remember that thick fog is, is a reduced weather condition and is this atmospheric weather condition or environmental weather condition that hamper visibility. You turn on the deep beam headlights and the fog lights. Is this correct? Is this correct? It's yes, because the purpose of the fog light is for the foggy weather. It's for the foggy weather. Remember that, how did you use it? We have fog light at the front. We have fog light at the back. The fog light at the front is used when you have 
a reduced weather condition. Weather condition. But the fog light behind is used when you have a kind of bad weather condition that reduce drastically reduce well, visibility. So you need to call in the rear one. And anytime you press the button of the rear one, remember that the first the front one will be will be on, will be activated also. But anytime you're using the front one, the rear one will not on. Number 18. Where should a minor who is taller than 1.5, 1.35 sits in a private car? Sits in a private car. In the rear or the front seats, wearing the seat belt for the adults. You know, because the question says taller than 1.35. So when you're taller than 1.85, you have right to use the seat belt. And remember, don't let them trick you in exam. You can sit at the front or behind. So far, it's safe. So far, you meet up the required safety measure, which will make you not submarine when you use the seat belt according to the heights. Number 19. What does this sign indicate? Look at the sign. Very well. You got a sign. Secular red with a pedestrian inside it, number 19. That is prohibit, entering is prohibited to pedestrian. Secular red means prohibition. Prohibition, entering is prohibited to, to them. Number 20, is it mandatory for a private car with a trailer to carry a spear tire for the trailer? To carry a spear tire for the trailer? It's no. It's no. A private car, remember that a private car tow a light trailer. So you don't need, it's not compulsory for you to carry a spare tire for that trailer because your tire covers that, that trailer because it's a light trailer. The light trailer. If you have any question or any explanation, you can call in through my number 620-586-038. If you have any question, you can call in through 620-586-038. Now, if one question is not clear, because we are doing correction uh, of the class yesterday. Now, as I said, number 21, is there a relationship between speed and bodily injury? Is there a relationship between speed and the bodily injury, number 21, is yes, is yes. There's a relationship between, between both. The higher you speed, remember, the more serious injury will be in the event of an accident. So there's a relationship between them. When you go higher speed, an accident happens. <laughs> the injury will be so high. But when you go lesser speed, the injury will be lesser. Number 22 says, are you permitted to stop or park on or near the pedestrian crossing? On or near. You can park on the pedestrian crossing. You should know that. That is very, very clear. You cannot stop or park on the pedestrian crossing. But you may stop or park nearby. But you can't park on it. Because parking on it, you are depriving the pedestrian to use it. So in that case, if pedestrian go and use other part of the road and accident happens, you that park on that pedestrian crossing will be, will be sanctioned. So you can park on the pedestrian crossing or you can park nearby. It. Number 23. Number 23 says, when should you look through the rear view mirror? When should you look through the rear view mirror? You have to understand that regularly, even though you are not carrying out any maneuver, you must always watch your mirror. Remember that in any area where you have traffic, most especially in the built-up area or in Tahoban where there's much traffic, you must look at at interval of five to 10 seconds frequently. But where you have uh, like motorway and dual carriageway, where you have oh, no traffic, you can do that 10 to 15 seconds. It is very, very important, even in practical, when you are driving, you have to concentrate and be looking mirror. 
because the examiner behind is watching you through the center mirror to see if you are watching mirror. And if you are not watching mirror, means that you are not thinking of safety and you are not watching your surroundings. So it's very, very important that you watch mirror regularly. Number 24, are the effect of alcohol greater in inexperienced driver? Huh? The effect of alcohol will be greater in that case. Yes, an inexperienced driver takes more, take alcohol in. It means that he will not be able to control, to manipulate the vehicle very well. So in that case, what will happen? Yes, this is why the permitted blood alcohol concentration limit is lower for them. So that because they restrict them for the quality of intake which they will have. So that is why a new driver have 0.15 milligram per liter in the breath. That's what it is. But someone who is more than two years have 0.25 as general. Now, number 25, when you overtake a pedestrian, is it mandatory to leave a minimum lateral separation of 1.5 of 1.50 meters when you are driving? When you overtake a pedestrian, remember that you have to leave 1.5, which is also 1.50 meters outside of town, not inside town. So where people live, you don't, you don't need to leave 1.5. It's according to the characteristics of the road, how wide the road is. But when we talk about when, when, you, when they are found outside of town and you're overtaking them, you must leave at least 1.50 meters, which can also be 1.5 meters. When you are, so note this, 1.5 lateral separation to a pedestrian, it's only applicable to outside of town. But inside of town, it's no. Number 26, if you make any modification to your vehicle after you registered it, what procedure must you carry out? When you modify it, you spot it, you change it, you buy a new big tire, you classify the vehicle. In that case, you should understand that you must take the vehicle for an extraordinary technical inspection before driving it again. Though you've passed an ITV, you have an ITV that is still reading, and you modify, you, you, you put spoiler, some people call it spoiler, put spoiler on the vehicle. You have to take the car back for an extraordinary uh, technical inspection. So it's very, very important, which is, which is B. Number 29, what does this sign symbolize? Let me just show the sign. Look at this. Look at this, look at this sign where you have this red and white panel. They are called temporary, temporary direction board. And you see cone on the roadway. You know, that kind of uh, a sign is called circumstantial traffic sign. It's the second hierarchy of sign. It's found on the road where they are carrying out road works and they use to direct and to map out lanes. So in that case, when you have this, this sign means Entering is prohibited, and it indicates the direction of traffic that I cannot cross because that cone or that thing forms an imaginary line which you, can, you cannot cross, which is hey, you can cross it. So number thirty of it says, from a traffic perspective, is a motorcycle considered an automobile? Motorcycle is an automobile. That's a two wheel automobile. A motorcycle is an automobile. Remember that a, a, a motorcycle is an automobile, which is a motor vehicle, a motor vehicle. So if you have any question from anyone, that is the 30 questions we did uh, two days ago, which I marked and, and we're using this forum to do the correction for students. And remember, if, this, if you watch this video, help us to share, is a likely question in exam. And if you want to ask more information to know how to get your driver's license in an easy way at a convenient time, you can call us in Madrid on 620-586-038. Thank you for coming on board. I remain Steve Aditella.